Welcome to another video, A Walk with Phil, and I'm in West Bromwich. And today I'm going to take you in the Queen Square shopping centre. Uh, well, what can we say about this place? It was opened in 1971, and it, there was nothing like it when it was opened in 1971. People from all over the black country would come and visit this cathedral uh, to retail. Uh, but sadly, it ain't nothing like it used to be. And you'll understand why when I'll take you in there and you just see how many empty units there are in there now. Uh, it was a hive of activity once, but not anymore. Does anybody remember when the Queen Square didn't look like this from the outside? It was this big orange canopy, I remember. And it wasn't called the Queen Square when it opened in 1971. It was, in fact, the Sandwell Centre. The end had this big orange canopy. And, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, it really was different. And the one behind me, the King Square, uh, that opened a few months later, in 1971. Uh, but the Queen Square, and I think it might have included the King Square as well, uh, in today's money, it would have cost £53 million to have built this place. Uh, not forgetting, of course, the wholesale destruction of all the streets that were around the Queen's and the King Square shopping centres. But the Queen Square we're looking at today was built on a road called Queen Street, Upper Queen Street. Queen Street would have a bus terminus, a pub, churches, theatre, cinema, they all got bulldozed for this place. So, yeah, another thing as well, do you remember an Express and Star box? People, people used to sell Express and Star newspapers from a box and there was one just outside here in Queen Square. It was always tipped over. Anyway, just the little things sometimes, isn't it, that you remember? Anyway, let's go inside and I'll show you what an utter disaster this place has now become. There's approximately 60 units uh, allocated to this shopping centre. Back in 1971 they were all taken. About 10 years ago the take-up of the units fell to around 45% and today it's less than 30%. This is one of the leading stores that the owners of the shopping centre like to advertise. Yeah, the taglines are this centre's got leading brand names with uh, health and beauty stores to the latest tech a range of independent and specialist retailers. This is, there is surely something for everybody at the Screen Square Shopping Centre. That's what you'll find when, you look, when you're searching for the shopping centre. But as you can see, it doesn't look too bad here on the left. Uh, we've got a clothes store and we've got an optician's. And you also notice when you come up here that it's a bit of a ramp as you climb up and they built this uh, shopping centre on a couple of levels and the reason they built this on a ramp to get to the square in the centre was so they could build another ramp with a less, more, less of a slope to get to the multi-storey car park that is situated in Mal 3 apparently Jeff Baines we have here. One of these used to be Thornton's. Well, I don't know if you remember the stores that used to be in here, but such a long time ago. Can't remember myself what used to be. I remember some of the, there was Dulcie's, the shoe shop here on the corner, taken over by Shaw's and look at it now. That's closed down now. Is all the shutters are down. Yeah, so you'd come up this ramp and when you hit the centre, well, this is where it all act. This was all the action was here, wasn't it? In the centre of this Queen Square. 
Yeah, because it was just here where you'd have an oasis. Um, there used to be concrete seating, uh, a, a sort of a short, small raised floor surface, and in the centre of that was a pool with ferns floating on the top with three columns of water that would cascade from the ceiling into the pool and in between the concrete seating areas between the concrete seating areas you'd have plants and ferns and just over here on the corner there'd even be a I think it was a piece of coal in a glass cabinet yeah but the centre's gone there's nothing going on in the centre of this place now it's completely empty except for this guy who's selling phone cases and let's have a look at the clock that's one of the originals from the shopping centre it says 25 to 9 in fact it's about uh, quarter to 11 so that's not working Boots is now the only original store main leading brand store left here in the Queen Square and what I'm going to do now, as we climb the ramp, the sure, well, quite a small ramp, uh, I'm going to go up to the top here where the used to be the multi-storey car park. Where we've got the West Midlands Ambulance Charity Shop. That, who remembers that being Chelsea Girl? Uh, in fact, there's one or two stores I remember around here. Uh, this Excite clothes store used to be the gas showroom you could actually come in here and pay your gas bill and I remember and I don't know where but these are all glass windows now but just around here there used to be a large round window which you could look down on the people who was going about their business in the store So now we're going up another ramp. Now this place is the other major brand, Holland and Barrett's. Still going here in the Queen Square. Who would have thought they'd still be here? Uh, but this this up here now is, is just dead now, isn't it? Absolutely dead. It was just here on this blue shuttered shop. That used to be the MEB. You'd pay your electric bills in there as well. And we all remember this being Sainsbury's back in the day. And then it closed down and then we had Quick Save. And all along here, there'd be a few stores. There was a camera shop, I just can't remember what it was called now. They did move down to the lower parts of the Queen Centre, but uh, it used to be here for a time. And there was also Druckers were here, but they came later. There was also a butcher's, probably, butcher's was probably just this one, and there was a greengrocer's at the end, and ahead of me. Who remembers the Farrier's Pub? Well, the original Farrier's Pub was in Queen Street, and it was a bit later on, in the 70s or mid-70s, I think, they built the, um, the Farrier's Pub here. So the Queen Square actually stayed open, or the Sandwall Centre actually stayed open quite late. Uh, in fact, I'm not sure if it's ever closed. You could actually walk through the shopping centre late at night. But if you didn't know, there are still toilets here in the Queen Square. Oh, there you go. Disabled facilities and men and women's toilets. And just ahead of me there, that used to be the entrance to the, uh, the multi-storey car park. I think it had five levels and it had a, the cost of about three million pounds back in then. I'd, what would that be now, about 20 odd million to build that multi-storey car park. And as you can see, I'll just show you, it had to have this ramp to get to this level so we could meet the first floor of the multi-storey car park. That is the reason why we got these levels. It was all to do with um, all to do with the multi-storey car park but now as you, most of you know it's all been bulldozed not sure what they're going to do with it but uh, I think uh, 
the council are always looking for private investors in this particular building and uh, I'm not sure who's actually invested in this place but uh, there was a local businessman I heard that uh, wanted to regenerate the area and he wanted access to many of the brownfield sites around here to build housing and I think that's what's going to happen uh, I don't think they'll be interested in building many more shops or creating any more retail but I think it's more to do with um, housing now, low cost housing, flats, apartments. I'm not sure if the multi-storey car park that once was is earmarked for housing. There's a very good chance that it will be. And they said that would regenerate the area because more people would come to the town. Well, I don't know. OK, we're back at the square now. I think this compass, or this uh, compass shop, or I think one of them used to be Rumbelow's, an electrical store. So what we're going to do now, look at this big plant here. Yeah. There is a few, there's a couple of seating areas here, but I do remember the oasis in the centre of this square and with all that concrete seating it was really abused you know so many people would sit there all day and all evening and the people who would naturally use it the ones who were shopping couldn't get anywhere to sit I'm going to come back up here but I'll just show you down this we'll walk along here because look at this for an absolute disaster around here isn't it this used to be a clothes store I think it was McKay's, McCoy's something like that but they closed a, a couple of years back and now it's totally empty and that goes for all along this side as well and right up to Boots where I remember a couple of jewellers down here there was when it first opened there was here I think there was uh, Sterling's jewellers and there was Paragon's jewellers and much later, somebody called Stan Willits, who used to have a shop up the uh, upper part of the high street, moved in here. A kind of a electrical accessory store. And now we're at the rear of this monstrosity. The public building was much heralded as a hot art gallery, but its most popular feature was the cafe. Now, I'll show you now what's happening here. The, well, this used to be the site of the old bus station. I think many of you would remember that. And that was one of the reasons, one of the reasons that the Queen Square was so successful. People would come off the bus here and just go through that entrance there and be greeted with all these shops. And uh, here, well, what can we say about the front now? It's so getting so run down. It's really looking dilapidated at the front here. Um, we've got all these um, food stores, these restaurants that were, well, I think we're sort of doing okay, I had thought, when the new Square Shopping Centre opened in 2013, costing 200 million. Uh, these uh, restaurants that they had here, uh, they were doing all right. And when the COVID came along, uh, they closed up and never reopened. But I do remember there was a, Furniture store at the end, I think it was OK Walker, but I could be wrong on that one. Uh, Ashby's Opticians was next to it, I think. I think just here, there used to be a restaurant or cafe here on the corner. Uh, it was Casper's Desserts, but again, that's closed up now. But this uh, monstrosity of a building really has contributed to really not being able to fully develop and regenerate the area, because just imagine if if the new square had got access to this particular piece of land, maybe we could have had something like the Cheshire Oaks, uh, where you have all these discount stores, which are so popular at Cheshire Oaks, and there's one up in Cannock. Very popular, we could have had something like that, but that's always in the way. Anyway, we'd just look ahead as you would come in off the buses and you'd be walking along here now, and ahead of you would be Poundland. And Poundland used to be Tesco, didn't it? 
and Tesco's was one of two supermarkets here in the in the centre after Sainsbury's. Tesco's was was the main landowner of that new square shopping centre. Uh, well, Poundland used to be on the corner of the Queen's, just coming to the entrance of the High Street. But this used to be Tesco. And just there, beyond this metal barrier, used to be an escalator that would take you up to the first floor of Tesco, where they would sell clothes and electrical items and who remembers the green shield stamps yeah they used to give green shield stamps didn't they Tesco but anyway on well, this corner here used to be mother care that was next to boots but mother care has been long gone and it's never been used for anything else other than I should say it was used for a, it was a charity shop for a short time the Queen's Rent, the Queen's Square does offer free Wi-Fi but I'm not sure what would attract you to come in here and sit other than the free Wi-Fi. Now they're either all little, they're all small units here. Uh, this is probably what they say about the tech uh, specialist in mobile laptop repairs, electronic cigarettes. There's a shop here called Wet Bomb, but that's now sadly closed Closed up. This is the Nail Bar. You've got to have a Nail Bar. But that used to be a card shop. It used to be a card shop back in the day. The end one here, who remembers when it used to be a record store? It's now a salon stop, beauty store. Yeah, there used to be a record store in there, and then afterwards, I think it became. Um, I think afterwards it became a place where they sold prams, where they sold prams. Uh, but this has been changed around a bit now. You'd be met with, so you'd go underneath the ring road, and then you'd climb some steps to be greeted by a pub called the Flask. And Queen, there was some bit of Queen Street would be left. The police station was there. Robinson's Cake Factory was there. It's, it's all been bulldozed now for this place, the New Square Shopping Centre. Which cost £200 million and it opened in 2013. Now this used to be the road that used to run round the shopping centres, the Queen's and the King's. Uh, because that, that, that allowed for the pedestrianisation of the middle of the high street. One of the things that's badly needed here is something to occupy the centre. If you ain't occupying the centre, then nothing is happening. The centre is the important part of any building, any structure. And this shopping centre is no different. And just here, uh, my complaints about this ridiculous amount of um, counter space and metal has fallen on deaf ears. It's still here after many years, not being used. Last I heard was this was going to be auctioned off, but really this ought to be um, a place where they still serve food and drink. The Queen Square, the management of Queen Square say that food and drink you can get from Holland and Barrett, which is ridiculous really. But this should be a place where, uh, they, they, well, the, it's been claimed that there's a, quite a huge footfall coming through here, but many use this place as a shortcut down to the new square. But they, this could still be used, it used to be called made food. And this is where people could still sit and, uh, and, the, and, and have food and drink, and have food and drink, and that would hopefully create a more vibrant atmosphere right here in the centre. But absolutely nothing going on here. 
It's mainly a shortcut now to New Square. What I'm going to do now is just show you one last look. Nothing going on up there at all except Holland and Barrett. Charity shop, empty store, empty store, empty store. SF ahead of me, empty store. All that corner ahead of me is empty and all the way down to where the public is down that level. That's all. All empty stores down there. Only boots here and mother care that you spill on the corner, that's empty. This is an absolute disaster of a shopping centre that was once admired and praised throughout the black country in the 70s and the 80s. But it's very, 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 very dismal. And it almost has the feel of an abandoned project. What on earth are you gonna do with this place to attract shops to come back here? to the Queen Square. What a disaster, eh? I told you. If you ain't been in the Queen's Shopping Centre for a long time, you can see why it's getting a reputation for uh, being almost looking like an abandoned project. It really is a disaster zone now. As a lot of shopping centres are throughout the black country, but this one was a premier shopping centre uh, for the black country, really, not just West Bromwich and it's just withering away and it's almost died now i'm not sure what else, what you could actually do with this uh, it does need some major investment to perhaps uh, come up with some new ideas and how to promote the shopping center uh, there was talk of creating floor events and performances in the center but nothing really come of that uh, i've not heard of any performances or music or anything otherwise happening in the centre of this uh, shopping centre so uh, that's not took off so I'm not really sure myself what on earth you could do with it some people have even suggested it should be demolished <laughs> I can't see that happening it's going to cost far too much money to do that so we are stuck with it here in West Brom so well, that's it so if you like the video hit the like button and also hit subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell for new videos and I'll see you on the next one.